when it comes to doing, getting what you need starts with our app. Need it today? Pick it up curbside. Need it to you? We deliver. Your trunk? Our trucks. However you get it, we've got you. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. A gorgeous 76 degree Saturday from our nation's capital as Harvard and Howard, two prestigious institutions home to presidents and vice presidents, astrophysicists, entertainers, and NFL players are set to take the field from Audi Field in the Truth and Service Classic. Harvard coming out of the Ivy League and Howard representing the MEAC. As we say hello and welcome you in, someone very familiar with Howard University, the former Bison quarterback and NFL player, Jay Walker. I'm Tiffany Green. And when you think of this matchup on the field, you really have to take it to the classroom. Why? Because of all of the high GPAs and SAT scores from the players. You know, you hear me around the country, I always say, first and foremost, Howard is and will always be an academic institution, first and foremost. And Harvard, you say the same thing for them. But fortunately for the Harvard fans, they got a pretty good football team they bring down here. Indeed, in his 29th season as head coach, Tim Murphy has a running back by the name of Aiden Borgay, who has taken the reins and really helping this Crimson offense. And you can see it when you watch the film. They have a very complicated running scheme. They're always giving you different looks and formations. And Borgay is taking advantage of being his first year as a starting running back, averaging 6.1 yards per carry behind a very talented and experienced offensive line. When they come to the ballpark, you know you're going to see a lot of the rushing attack. Fifth in FCS in rushing yards per game you see there on the screen. Meanwhile, one of the points of emphasis for this Howard team this week when talking with defensive coordinator Troy Douglas, making sure you tackle well and they're going to lean on their top two tacklers. Yeah, they've got to do it by committee. When anytime you're facing a team that likes to run the ball that will force it, you have to get there and like we like to say, gang tackle the football. Terrence Holland, the outside linebacker, very active, has the ability to track down a opposing runners and Kenny Gallup is the leading tackler for this team however they said they need him to make more tackles in this game as they're going to try to funnel the rushing attack towards him well coming up on the show today Jay will hear more from you your HBCU power rankings along with your gimme five Hollywood you can't wait for that meanwhile we talked about the long tenured coach from Harvard we'll see the mark that Tim Murphy has made in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Harvard wins the toss. They defer. And Howard will receive the kick first. The Bison coming in in their second week in a row playing, or second game in a row, playing an Ivy League school, dropped one to Yale. Back at the beginning of the month, that goes into the end zone. A touchback and our first look at the Howard offense run by Quentin Williams. Williams, the senior from nearby Upper Marlboro, Maryland. And Quentin Williams will have the task of trying to move down the field and engineer drives against this Harvard defense. And the key for Howard University, they need to get off to a quick start. Too many slow starts. They fight hard when their backs are against the wall. First sign I'm looking for if I'm head coach Larry Scott, what do we do to get Quentin Williams off to a fast start so we can kind of let everybody know, hey, our senior quarterback leader is back and he can be the guy that can lead us to points on the board. And a change just before coming onto the field as Jalen Tolbert will get the start as the signal caller for the Bison. So first start for the redshirt freshman out of Hollywood, Florida and completes the pass to Antoine Murray brought down by linebacker Jack McGowan. Well, Tolbert played at Chaminade Madonna and only two for three on the season coming into today's game. And there was questions whether, you know, Quentin Williams would maintain his starting role. But Larry Scott yeah. changing it up. I, I'm not jumping the gun yet. Maybe in warm up something happened to Quentin Williams because we talked to Coach Scott. He was doubling down on Quentin Williams. So. We don't see him on the sideline yet. I think maybe the warm-ups, he might have tweaked something. We'll see how it plays out. The handoff and carry by Ian Wheeler. And Wheeler picks up one. So now on third down, this Howard offense, second in the MEAC in terms of points per game, putting up nearly 
24. Third and seven, the line to gain the 35 yard line. Tolbert Look out. swings That's it out. A lateral. a lateral pass, but it goes wow. out of bounds. Very fortunate, but that ball will be spotted right there at the 21. And so a three and out on the opening offensive drive for Howard. Yeah, and that's just a, a mistake right there. I mean, as a quarterback, when you step forward, you have to know that's a lateral pass. Fortunately, it went out of bounds, but not the start that you wanted to see if you're Howard University. We talk about an offense that needs to get it going. Three and out, first drive. Philip Richard punting it away, calling for the fair catches. Scott Woods and the Crimson offense will take the field. We mentioned about Aiden Borgay and Borgay carrying the load for Harvard this season. Three and one on the year. And Charlie Dean, the senior out of Odessa, Florida, near that Tampa area, will lead the way. And he can sling it. You know, you talk about quarterbacks that have command of the offense. Charlie Dean is that guy. They feel that they can beat anybody because of his quick release, accurate throws, and competitive nature. It was Dean who last season was the starter but went down on the back half of the season with an injury. But he's regained his starting role. Set the game clock to 1-3-3-5. So as they correct the game clock, it's Harvard coming in with wins over Mary Mack, Brown, and Cornell, as we mentioned. Dean last week, 15 of 29, 208 yards and two passing touchdowns. First play. And the pass incompletely intended target, Kim Wimberly. We talked about starting fast for Howard. That's the same thing that head coach Tim Murphy talked about is being able to get out ahead quickly and setting the tone. Second and 10 from the 40, they hand it off to Borgay. Borgay patiently running along that left side and then bottled up gain of four. And that's the battle I thought we would see early. I'm surprised it came out first play for the game offensively going with the pass. Normally teams that run the ball like to establish, control the line of scrimmage, wear you down, and get guys like Borgay going, getting him the number of touches he's going to need. But this is a pretty balanced offense when you talk about Harvard. 385 yards a game, total offense, good job running the ball as well as passing the ball. Looking to convert here on third and six. Dean with time and blanketed in the coverage as he tried to squeeze it in there to Scott Woods and Terrence Holland was right there with him. Great coverage by Holland. We talked about he was going to need to be a factor in the run defense, but also showing he can get it done and pass coverage as well. So both teams go on the field, three and out. And Sebastian Tasco, the sophomore punter out of New Jersey, boots it away. It bounces in front of Boyd and A.J. Boyd. Fair catches it at the 15-yard line after the 41-yard punt. So scoreless early on here from D.C. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's Black and Positively Golden Movement, elevating the next generation of black excellence. Beautiful scenics here as play resumes from Audi Field. On the carry there is Tolbert. Tolbert, who got the start here today over Quentin Williams. There's a good look uh, at Williams, who started the first 
five games for the Bison. And, and has been a starter basically his whole career at Howard University. He's had some ups and downs, not as many wins as you would like to see from your starting quarterback, but also think maybe the coaches want to see what Tober could bring to the party before they start conference play next week when all the games count. Non-conference game now, maybe give the young freshman a chance to see if he can give him a boost. On the carry, and Jared Hunter, the all-purpose back for the Bison, picks up three. Jack McGowan, that tough linebacker for the Crimson, brings him down third and short. See, this is the play where it's got to be routine. Third and short, you're backed up, but you have to have that go-to guy that can pick up these two yards to keep the drive going. Teams that start slowly on offense struggle to pick up the first down in situations like this, which should be gimmies. Tolbert finds Hunter out of the backfield and fighting for those yards and just short on third down. Victor Tatamy on the tackle. How do you win football games when you can't come, when guys are running a little bit short and it's third and two, and you don't have that bell, Calvin? They talked about Donqua, the left tackle, who's 6'8", 360 pounds. Maybe try and run for it there, but they've had plays here, and they've not picked up a first down yet in two series. Good punt there by Richards. Scott Woods on the return, trying to go to that left side, and good punt team coverage from the Bison. Well, yep. a fairly new head coach for the Bison and Larry Scott. Meanwhile, Tim Murphy, one of the longest tenure coaches in college football, especially in the Ivy League ranks. And he's got a group who he feels is very solid veteran bunch and ready to make a push into Ivy League play after this. They're already 1-0 in conference play. Or 2-0, oh, excuse me. The pass to Kim Wimberly. Wimberly, who has got speed. And across the 50, down near the 44-yard line as Xavier Robio. Yeah, just right here. Good assignment football. Make the block. Miss open tackle. Turn on the Jets. That's been a problem for the Bison defense. They're in the right position, but unable to bring the ball carriers down. Big play for Harvard. Wimberly, the speedster out of the New Orleans area as they hand it off to Borgay. Borgay running along that right side behind Tyler Neville, the tight end. And that's too much cushion. You know, they had the tight end that was pulling Neville, and it was probably three or four yards upfield before he engaged with somebody. You know, if you're going to have a lead block as a tight end, you got to wipe him out early and then allow Holland to come clean up. Charlie Dean. Looking to sling it into around three defenders, and somehow Wimberly stayed on his feet for a little bit longer. Good pickup there on first down, and that moves the chains as well. Who did they say had to make tackles? Kenny Gallup, right? Zero. So fortunate here, but the ball comes over. You're the free safety. That play, that runner's got to go down. He was lucky there was another bison there, Terrence Holland, to bring him down to the ground. They have to do a better job of wrapping up at point of contact. Borgay with the cut there. Borgay is into. Deeper territory inside the 10, and again, Kenny Gallup missing another opportunity there. I mean, they're putting you in a position to make the play. So they're saying we need Gallup to make tackles, and right there, he misses, gives up the spot, contain more yards, and Harvard is now inside the 10-yard line. 16-yard pickup on the ground from Borgay. He tries to pop it to the outside, and there's Gallup on the tackle. No gain on the play, second and goal. And if you're Harvard in this situation, you want to run downhill. I think it's harder for the defensive backs to backpedal when they're down in the red zone trying to run tosses and outside zone. This is where you give it to Borgay and ask him to run behind Austin Gentle, that left guard, and Alec Bank on the left side. Borgay with the cutback, and he's brought down by Darian Brokenburg. Brokenburg, what coaches say their best defensive player of that unit, needing him to make more plays as the season progresses. Brokenburg's a playmaker, but good job by offensive coordinator Mickey Fine. Going back to what works. You have one of the best rushing attacks in the country. Run the ball downhill inside the 10-yard line. 
I give him another dose of the running game coming straight at you. Woods in motion. Feeling the pressure. Too cute. And it's Terrence Holland who was right there to sack the quarterback. We mentioned him in the open. And they are a big stop from the Howard defense. Yeah, this is a good job getting to the quarterback. And they got a little too cute. They brought in the free safety Carson Hinton for a blitz. And I don't know if Charlie Dean saw him or accounted for him in his pass protection. Well, even the boys with the high IQs can sometimes get a little too smart for themselves right there. You started to have some success running the ball downhill, trying to go play action, and now you have to settle for a field goal attempt. Jonah LaPel on to attempt the 27-yard field goal. It's up and it's through as the Crimson put up three points on the board on their second offensive drive of this ball game. 7-10 to go in the first quarter. Three-nothing advantage for the visitors, Harvard over Howard. The Bison head coach, Larry Scott, who spent most of his coaching career in the state of Florida, now comes to the DMV area for his third season at the helm of America's Black College, according to my very own partner, Jay Walker. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like Coach Scott, I think, you know, if you look at the record overall, it doesn't seem like there's been much success, but considering where the program was and, you know, all the stuff they went through, I, I say it time and time again, and I get what the alumni base is saying, but they are trending in the right direction. They're, they're, they're competitive. They just haven't learned to get over that hump to bring back that culture of winning, but they are going the right direction. They look sweet, too. The, the Jordan gear looks sweet. Oh, so. yeah. They got the Jordan brand endorsement, and they are from head to toe representing and actually debuting these blue jerseys for the first time this season as Ian Wheeler collects the kickoff, tries to return it past the 15-yard line. We got a chance to see Howard at the beginning of the season, week zero for that MEAC SWAC challenge as they took on Alabama State and what was one of the wackiest games that I think we've been a part of, partner. Was it the, the seven weather delays that they had <laughs> yeah. there or was it the play on the field? But they were competitive. I think that was hope. They gave Alabama State a good game. Alabama State's proven to be a pretty decent swack ball club. And they were right there with them. And that, that's the problem that they're having at Howard. They're not finishing games. They're, they're playing with anybody. They either fall behind by a lot and fight themselves back in it or they get a lead and they give it up or they just start slowing. They haven't played four quarters of football all season. Hunter with the carry. And Hunter for a gain of a couple yards. He'll make it three, second down. So offensively, what does Lee Hull need to do? And in our conversations with him this week to, to jumpstart this offense, in your opinion, Jay? I think attack, maybe a little bit more aggressive or Take the short passing game early to get your quarterback going and try different looks. Right now we're seeing a wildcat formation with Casey Hawthorne, who's a wide receiver. He's kind of a jack of all trades. And a penalty on the field will await the call. Offsides, defense, number 98, five yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Well, Derek Hatton, part of this MEAC officials crew. And bump up five yards for Howard. Still in that Wildcat formation now. Only two yards to game, and it's Hawthorne. Correction. Yeah, that's Hawthorne right there who actually gets the first down. So they keep the chains moving as Tolbert trots back onto the field. Yeah, first first down of the game for them. They build on that momentum there. Jake Brown from Harvard, the hard-hitting linebacker, put a nice little pop on Hawthorne to make him work hard for it. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside, that's Hezekiah, Nashawn Hezekiah, the intended target overthrown. He was covered by James Herring, brings up second down. 
and got behind him there. And this was really good pass protection. Good job by Ian Wheeler on the pickup. Watch number 27. They're going to blitz the linebacker. Wham! That's where you get him. Get him off his feet. Plenty of time as a quarterback. Tolbert, you have to hit that throw. Give your wide receiver a chance. That ball was four or five yards out of bounds. Hunter along that left side. Got a good block up ahead. And a gain of about four. So now third and six on the way for the Bison. What you're doing now, you break the huddle, you're doing the number count. So Harvard is basically thinking, we can stop your running game with just five people in the box. They showed that last play. Now, obvious pass situation. They're probably only going to bring a four-man rush because they think they can get to the quarterback and drop everybody in zone coverage. Watch out for number four in motion. That's Richie LaRaza. They like to go to him on third down. Tolbert decides to tuck it, and there was Truman Jones to meet him right there. The lone captain for the Crimson, the heart of this defense, and slowing down the Bison. Yeah, good job disguising the coverage. They're going to bring both linebackers. And by the time Tolbert recognizes that there's a blitz coming, he runs into Truman Jones, who was a defensive end, that did a fake pass rush, was spying the quarterback there for the put down. Coach really raved about Truman Jones, didn't he? Couldn't yep. say enough good things about him. Said he is a Harvard football player. What we like, overcome a lot, high achiever. That one nearly blocked and downed as great starting field position for Harvard when they take the field. That it's to be about a 12-yard punt. And the Crimson will come back and try to make it a scoring drive here from D.C. Tim Murphy is synonymous with Harvard football, the all-time winning is coaching program history. Hired back in December 1993, he's won nine Ivy League championships, had a trio of undefeated seasons. And it was just a pleasure in talking with Tim Murphy this week because when he said, hey, look, let's look at the way that we build our program. This is built to sustain. They build players within the program. And he says they've been the backbone of why we've had such, such success over time. They're truly motivated to reach their full potential both in the classroom and on the field. And I think that surprised me knowing that he's got one of the best winning percentages of all time during his tenure. You know, you always think of Harvard University, you think of a bunch of things before you think of football. But the football program's been getting it done for a while. Shane McLaughlin now in the game in backfield and pick up a five. But go back to your point, Jay. And what I like to say is, you know, so often in, in the college football world, they say you can't have academics and athletics. you got to choose one or the other. Well, that's proof positive right there. I mean, Harvard, one of the, if they're not the most elite academic institution in the country, has a winning tradition in football. They've got a winning tradition in their lacrosse, and their basketball is getting good. So I don't want to hear that when I hear around the country, oh, you have to choose one or the other. I think now today's modern student athlete is looking for the student part to go along with the athletic part. And when we talked with Tim Murphy, he said, look, academics care first. And we can say that with conviction that we care about academics, but also we want to be successful on the athletic field as well. We talked about their basketball program, Tommy Amaker, the all-time winning is coach at Harvard. Been there since 2007. Amaker, he's a guy from the DMV. Mm -hmm. well, that he is. Played basketball With Fairfax, Duke, right? You know, yeah, let's call it DMV. Okay. <laughs> DMV, the district, Maryland and Virginia. Thank you for clarifying and schooling for some on second and 10, the handoff to McLaughlin along that left side. And he's wrapped up and brought down by Jevin Jackson. I, I will tell you, now, this is what you need. There's a second DMV area. Okay, now. So you go out to the Eastern Shore, and it's Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. They all come together and connect there. So there are several ones when they talk about that. But when you're here in the D.C. metropolitan area, Northern Virginia, Maryland, Prince George's County, Montgomery County, and District of Columbia, that's a DMV. 
I just learned something there. Thanks, Jay. On third and nine for Harvard. They keep it on the ground, and there's Kenny Gallup. We talked about the leading tackler for the Bison. There was a shirt tackle there. Yeah, let's give credit where credit is due. We've seen him miss a couple tackles, but here Harvard tried to fool him with a little draw play, running the ball in a passing situation. Gallup came up from a strong safety position and made a tackle right there at the point of contact. Well, Tim Murphy is sitting on his kicking unit and Jonah LaPel. And when we said, hey, coach, where are you comfortable with your kicker? He said, well, look, LaPel booted a 54-yarder in practice on Wednesday, so he feels real good about this 48-yard attempt from the senior out of Tarzana, California. It's up. Oh, off the left upright, and it's no good. Well, it had the distance, but the missed field goal, and Howard gets the ball back. We talked about it. Look how high up the upright this ball goes, and trying to hang on in there and missed it. Just left tailed upright. off there at the end. Harvard still holding tight to that three nothing advantage. The Bison offense back on the field and nowhere to run. A loss of yardage on the play as Jared Hunter is wrapped up by Tyler Huneman. Huneman. Uh, and the key is you got to win on first down. I mean, a successful offense wins on first down. What do I mean by that? Three yards is a win on first down. Three yards or more. Completed passes wins on first down. They stuff you to getting back to the line of scrimmage. You're playing behind the chains. Rolling to his right and connecting with his receiver as he's pushed out of bounds. And so Antoine Murray, who is a receiver in this offense, who is capable of having big numbers. They just got to get him the football. You see their second in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference in receiving yards. Move the pocket again. Seemed like we saw Tolbert more comfortable when he was on the run through a nice firm pass for the completion. He's not comfortable in the pocket. Don't be afraid to move him around. A timeout taken before the play clock expires by Larry Scott as he brings his Howard offense over to the sideline. 41 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. You know, and during this time, I'll be an opportunity to pay homage to a tough loss for the Howard Bison football community. One of my teammates on the championship team in 1994, James Spears, Big Spears, the hammer, passed away a couple days ago. Bison family send out all of our prayers and condolences. One of the best teammates that you could have there had everybody's back. Everybody on the yard knew him, and on behalf of me and my Bison brethren, rest in peace, Brother Spears. After the timeout, back on the field. Timeout on the field, <laughs> Harvard University. That's first charge timeout of the half. It's a 30 second timeout. I have to laugh at this. You know why? Because we coming into the game, we said this was a game of high GPAs and high intellect. Now they're overthinking it on third and three in the first quarter. We don't see that. When you look at the Harvard defense coming into today, you know, they led the FCS in rushing defense a season ago, currently sixth in the nation, first in sacks per game. So they want to make sure. Repeat ahead, that. Yeah. First, first in sacks per game. The boys from the Ivy attacking the quarterback. That's one of those keys right there. But a little surprised they could be so high up in sacks, but yet they give up so many points per game. That would be your sign of hope for if you're Howard. Like, we can score on these guys. Keep the quarterback upright, 
See if we can do some damage. Matthew McDonald in motion, the big 6'5 receiver, and rolling, rolling out, trying to just get it away, oh. and it's intercepted! What a play! Dominic Young-Smith making a diving effort there at the end. And the Crimson defense takes it away. And I just don't know if Tolbert recognizes the coverage. I mean, he's getting happy feet when he doesn't need to. You know, one little flash, just step up and move, and then here, just trying to do too much with the football. Untimely interception, and that's been the story of Howard University on offense. Great reaction by Dominic Young-Smith. The sophomore out of Williamsburg, Virginia, produces the first turnover of the game. And now, the Crimson only have a short way to go. Let's take another look at it here as the ball kind of bounced around and then. I mean, you never try and throw across your body. You know, trying to throw across your body, you lose the accuracy on your throw. Jared Hunter wasn't expecting the ball. So he just did a natural reaction and popped the ball up in the air. Like I said, that was a great reaction by Dominic Young-Smith. And credit Truman Jones, who we talked about earlier in this broadcast, providing the pressure, making Tolbert uncomfortable. And then the young D tackle picking it off. And I think they're going to take a review on this like they do with most turnovers. I guess the only key would be, did he catch it cleanly or did he use the ground to help assist in the interception? But I think, uh, I thought he caught it. Yeah. I thought it was a good, a good play. So you see that? Look at the reaction. Yeah, good job with the bobble, but not enough to overturn it. Howard, be careful. Get very aggressive, leaving the middle of the field open. They're going to try and bring pressure. That means you've got man-to-man -man coverage. Best starting field position, Charlie Dean going for it, but he and his receiver not on the same page. And that's why you blitz. You know, I say if you're going to blitz, you know it's man-to-man. -man. You try and speed up the quarterback's clock. And Charlie Dean knew he only had so much time to hold on to the ball. And you blitz and show different looks so they don't get comfortable with the timing of their routes. Second down, Borgay back at the ball game. Good hole on that left side, and Borgay got first down yardage and more inside the red zone. Well, they always seem to do a good job of having a lead blocker for Borgay. Rarely is it just outside zone. They like to get bodies over there, overload one side in the running game, and Borgay explodes for a 15-yard run. One more play before the end of the quarter, and Borgay trying to bounce off, shedding a tackler, and strong run on first down. And that brings us to the end of the quarter. Defensive battle here in the opening quarter from the Truth and Service Classic between Harvard and Howard. The Crimson on the road on top, 3-0, and driving. You use a map in your car, why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Now that's the shakaroni. Damn, that's huge. Oh, that's my piece of the shakaroni. That's the biggest one we make. Extra pepperoni, extra teas on that thing. <laughs> Somebody save me a slice. No. <laughs> they donate the dollar from every shakaroni to the Papa John's Foundation. Ah, uh, shakaroni. Uh, oh, bring it in, bring it in. Shakaroni. Ah, uh, uh, shakaroni. Get on beat, get on beat. Shakaroni. Ah, uh, uh, shakaroni. Shake that wig on, come on. Shakaroni. Ah, uh, shakaroni. Uh, uh, you guys were so off beat. Okay, all right, let's eat. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by McDonald's. Start of the second quarter here from Audi Field. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green as Crimson, the Crimson, trailing back onto the field as they're driving. Tim Murphy and his crew 
already with a three and one record and he mentioned how they wanted to come out quickly try to get some momentum and pace going they have a chance to try to punch it in here as board gay who's been the workhorse this season for harvard and a short game short game but you wonder if they get enough to pick up the first down and I expect on this drive, we saw them get a little bit too fancy on the previous drive when they moved the ball down here. I expect to see a heavy dose of that rushing attack. <laughs> that, that was a surprise. Yeah. Came in averaging 6.1 yards a carry and quietly has 80 yards plus rushing on the day. Borgay, a couple of cutbacks. Great and vision. he's pushing his way near the goal line, just short of the end zone on first and goal. Look at this vision. I mean, he sees daylight, bounces outside, then gets north-south again. You know, good running backs run the color. You know, you've got white jerseys on. If you see a bunch of blue jerseys, find someplace else to go with your peripheral vision. But I really liked how he was able to pop outside, change directions, and then get downhill in a hurry again to get that forward lean you need down in the red zone, close to the end zone. Borgay wishes he could finish off this drive potentially, <laughs> but his shoe popped off, so he has to go to the sideline, and Shane McLaughlin gets the carry, bounces to the outside. Can he get in? One man to beat, lunges in, and touchdown. Uh, if you were playing fantasy football, <laughs> you'd be a little <laughs> upset that you lost some points with Borgay leaving, but as we mentioned before, the key to having a good rushing attack is the offensive line up front, assignment football. And in this case here, able to shed the block of Robert Jones. And Shane McLaughlin gets into the end zone. But they've got bodies that are there. I mean, that's, that, that's what frustrates you. I mean, when you're Robert Jones, you're the cornerback. Yes, you're the number one cover guy, but you have outside contain. That means nothing gets outside of you. With one move, gave up outside, and touchdown. They had great starting field position, five plays, 66 yards, capped off by Shane McLaughlin's first touchdown of the season. 10-0 advantage for the Harvard Crimson. Harvard was able to punch it into the end zone, but they capitalized off the interception by Dominic Young-Smith at their best starting field position. That pressure up front causing havoc on offense for Howard. Yeah. You know, led to the touchdown for, How for Harvard, gave him great field position, but that's one where you, know, you tell Tolbert, okay, learn from your mistakes and you can't hurt your team like that. Hopefully it's a learning, teachable moment But it's been kind of the story. Remember, you know, we had Howard in the Miak Swack Challenge, and they were moving the ball well. Then all of a sudden, bad play from the quarterback, interception, return. They get a touchdown, and they lose momentum. Now this is where your character is built. Where's your character come in if you're Howard? Do you really believe you're going to win this football game? If so, okay, your quarterback made a mistake. You're down, but the scoreboard's still close. Is your offense going to kick in, and you're going to let Harvard know they're in for a football game? Well, one of the things that Larry Scott told us was the fact that they're coming off of a bye week, so they had some extra time to prepare, and he felt good coming into today, healthy. Said, hey, look, our approach has been great in practice. Mentally, we're in a good space. But it's also about building belief that they can compete and have the confidence to try to pull out wins. This is still not an official home game for them, although they are in the D.C. area, but uh, they'll be playing <laughs> next week at Green Stadium for and, homecoming. And, and as soon as this game is over, Mechaversary, they're calling it this year, the Mechaversary is on the clock. <laughs> Howard homecoming with nothing like it in America. They call Howard the Mecca. The Bison offense back on the field, and Truman Jones once again making a great play from his defensive end position a player that Coach Murphy says, hey, it's, he's a borderline NFL guy. Yeah, you know, and that's what your captains do. They recognize when they're the unblocked man, attack and find the football. 
great recognition. They were trying to run away from him. And once again, Howard struggling on first down, falling behind the chains. 70th foul of the season for Jones here. Good movement as Antoine Murray moving forward, brought down by James Herring. You know, it's interesting to watch Harvard on defense with their you know, defense. I mean, you talk about playing assignment football. I mean, it's assignment football. When they ran that wide receiver bubble screen, there was no way that Khalil Dawsey, the cornerback, was going to allow the runner to get outside him because he knew he had help coming from the inside. So they were playing that outside in. Good assignment football, minimize the damage. But for Howard, it's third and manageable. You should be able to convert on this third down. On the carry, and right there, the first time we see Eaton James. Eaton James, the son of the former NFL great Edrin James. Pro Football Hall Pro of Famer. Pro Football Hall Edwin of Famer. Edrin, Edrin James. Yep. Eight of nine for Eaton. Yeah, there's a lot of excitement around that. He's got a burst. They say he's faster than people think. It has the ability to make people miss, as you saw. He made two Harvard defenders miss there on his way to a first down. And he remains in the backfield. Pistol formation. Let's go, dude. And Hewn win with the stop after that gain of one. I think you go with the pistol because we talked about the quick burst that Eden James has. Gives your running back an opportunity to get downhill a little bit faster, close to the line of scrimmage. He was the talk of spring football about what a find they found in Eden James, who chose to come to Howard University over some other schools. He trots out Casey Hawthorne. In that wildcat position, trying to run to that right side. And a decent pickup brought down by Nate Leskovic, now third and six. Let me ask you this question here, Mr. Green. We see wildcat formations all over the country. Howard runs wildcat where they actually take the quarterback out the game. You're, you're tipping your hand. Why not just take your quarterback, put him at the top of the field? I don't care if he's got one arm or a broken arm. They're going to cover him. So uh, that one's a little bit different with the Wildcat formation. You're really losing the element of surprise. Five straight runs to start this drive. Now the quick screen here to Jared Hunter, and Hunter finds some space. He's got room across the 30, 25, 20, and he's brought down. Tackle made by Josiah Jaquite. Uh, what a play call. And look at the patience by the freshman. Blitzing linebacker thinks he's going to get a sack. No, sets you up for a slip screen, and the rest is all Jared Hunter running with the purpose, with the mission, finishing off a big play for Howard University. Well, biggest and best play so far this afternoon for the Bison. They find themselves with their first red zone trip. Wildcat again with Hawthorne. And Wheeler in the backfield, and Hawthorne keeps it, tries to go up the gut. And a gain of about three or four. The helmet comes off of North Peters for Harvard, and so he will go to the sideline as he's Gimpy running over. Keep an eye on number eight, Antoine Murray. He's the most explosive wide receiver they have along with Ilaraza who's in the slot top of your screen tried to zip it in there and Ilaraza was the intended target but Jake Brown came up with the deflection I'm very fortunate this ball wasn't intercepted you see Ilaraza does a good job of sneaking behind the linebacker there's a window there but Great job by getting back into the play by Matt Hudson, number 49 from his linebacker position. Didn't fall all the way for the play action in the backfield. Able to get the pass break up. Pressure in his face, dumping it down. That's Ian Wheeler. Ian Wheeler is in for the touchdown. 12 yard pitch, catch, and run. 
unconventional. Normally you don't run screens this close to the end zone, but a little misdirection, a good job getting an entourage downfield. The right guard, number 50, Jamal Hines, does a good job getting to the second level, setting up a little wall, and Howard University with the first touchdown in the game for them. Aaron Bickerton, the freshman on to attempt the extra point. And it's good. So Howard gets on the board, now just trailing by three. Yeah, how do you get the freshman quarterback some padded stats? Two consecutive screens for successful yards. They cap it off with Wheeler in the end zone. You use a map in your car. Why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Now that's the shakaroni. Dang, that's huge. Oh, that's my piece of the shakaroni. That's the biggest one we make. Extra pepperoni, extra cheese on that thing. <laughs> Somebody save me a slice. No. <laughs> <laughs> they donate the dollar from every shakaroni to the Papa John's Foundation. Ah, uh, uh, shakaroni. Oh, uh, bring it in, bring it in. Shakaroni. Ah, uh, uh, shakaroni. Get on beat, get on beat. Shakaroni. Ah, uh, uh, shakaroni. Shake that wig on, come on. All right, you guys were so off beat. Okay. All right, let's see. We've got a ball game, folks. 9.31 to go in the first half, and Howard with a nine-play, 75-yard drive. Took off a little more than four minutes, and you compare that to the complete yardage they had on their first four drives, and it's a promising sign for Larry Scott. You know, give credit to the offensive coordinator, uh, Lee Ho, with the play selection there. And the freshman quarterback in the game having trouble completing the ball down the field. Had two screens during that drive, but were crucial. You know, the big one by Jared Hunter, then you had Ian Wheeler do it as well. So keeping them off balance the unconventional way, chipped away at this Harvard lead. And now the question is, what will Troy Douglas's defense be able to do to try to hold off the Crimson attack? Yeah, and I think, Douglas, if you go back to your team and say, look, if you make the tackles, we're calling the great defenses. If you all can bring the ball carriers down, then you can make some stops. Otherwise, you know, number 21 is going to continue to be a problem for Howard. That's Aiden Borgay who came into today's game averaging about 125 yards per game, fifth best in FCS. And you'd mentioned, Jay, how he has quietly amassed yardage, nine carries, 83 yards for the senior. So my Howard University math says it's somewhere around nine yards a carry with a little change. Give him the football. It means if you give it to him twice, he should come up with the first down for you the way this game is played out. Preseason Ivy League Offensive Player of the Year. They hand it off to number 21 once more, wrapped up by Kenny Gallup. But boring run that you just saw there, but that should have been a run where he gained one or two yards. He ended up gaining five yards on something where there was contact made at the line of scrimmage. Just with that forward lean that all the good runners have. Keep the legs going, keep the pad level low. It sets up third and short. Wimberly in motion. Play fake, they find Wimberly. And it's Wimberly showing off that speed. Kim Wimberly. We talked with coaches said, hey, look, this was a big get for us. Absolutely. Said he's my best football player. You know, when you see it, he moves different than everybody else on this roster. Had some offers from some SEC schools to go there, but Mama told him you're going to go with the best academic offer you get if you don't get the athletic offer that you want. From down there in Louisiana, Slidell, right there next to New Orleans, and he knew it was a good get, and we've seen him make some catches and plays here in this game. Play action, Charlie Dean trying to go for it. And double coverage. And a penalty marker comes out at the end of the play as Jack Bill was the intended target. 
Yeah, it was a late flag, but it was a hold. You know, I thought I saw a hold early in the route. And the official was seeing how it played out on the field, but. Holding. Defense, number 28. 10-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. You know, when you saw the play, it looked like it was an uncatchable ball, but just to clarify the rules, holding is holding. If you hold any time during that pass route, they can call it on you. See, if the holding had already occurred, I think the official was waiting to see if there was a catch made. But I saw it early in the play. There was a hole there. Borgay again, but Borgay with no room to run is snuffed out, and good defense there by Christian White. Borgay, who, when we talked with Coach Murphy, said he's the MVP of our team this season. He's helped to carry them throughout the year so far. Second and ten. Dean has a man wide open. Ledger hatches in for the touchdown. That was just an easy backyard play as Hatch got behind the defense and 36 yards later, the score. Schematically, they just designed them that way and the Howard defensive back fell for it. I mean, they fake a bubble screen and you think somebody's going to block you and then he just runs right by you. That was Clayton Perrin, number two. I mean, he's looking, trying to get in the backfield to help in the running game. And meanwhile, he doesn't realize that they've got somebody that's going downfield, not trying to block you. Nice execution of deception by Harvard. The extra point attempt is good. So the sophomore out of Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, Florida, catches his second touchdown of the season and puts his team up by 10. You use a map in your car. Why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Now that's the shakaroni. Dang, that's huge. Oh, that's my piece of the shakaroni. That's the biggest one we make. Extra pepperoni, extra teas on that thing. <laughs> Somebody save me a slice. No. <laughs> they donate the dollar from every shakaroni to the Papa John's Foundation. Ah, oh, shakaroni. Oh, bring it in, bring it in. Shakaroni. Get on beat, get on beat. Shakaroni. Ah, ah, shakaroni. Shake that wig on, come on. Shakaroni. Ah, ah, shakaroni. You guys were so off beat. Okay, all right, let's eat. Welcome back to Audi Field. Audi Field. Tiffany Green, Jay Walker here with you. Harvard, their first couple of drives. They had a couple of opportunities connected on their second drive. Missed the field goal the next, but the last two have resulted in touchdowns. You say pretty productive. I mean, Howard's only forced one punt, the three and out early. And they've been on the field for a while. This our defense has been on the field for a while, and this is where you need your offense to get a nice little drive down the field. Let's give credit to Howard. They scored last time they had the ball, but then Harvard responded and came right back down with the touchdown of their own. Well, taking a look at the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference preseason poll, this group picked fifth. South Carolina State, the Cricket Celebration Bowl champions, the overall HBCU national champions, North Carolina Central at number two, the Norfolk State, Delaware State, and rounded out by Morgan State. Now, what does the parentheses mean in that poll? A couple people, you need to check their votes. <laughs> you, you need to check their votes. I mean, you know, I think Morgan State coming a brand new head coach. You know, I don't think they thought they would be there. They've improved, but. They're just, showing, they're just showing love for their home team. Great play once again. Truman Jones, we've talked about him a lot, but we have to feature him once more. A player who is majoring in biomechanical or biomedical engineering. Wow, that's just how you do it. 
Brennan Brown, the tight end, came up to block him real softly, and he got grown man stiff arm. That was a grown man play by Truman Jones. Loss of three on the play. Truman Jones, who is, again, just the heart of the defense for Scott Larkin, the defensive coordinator. Good play there, and nice juke move from Richie Ilaraza, but still third and long coming up. You know, the one thing Harvard is not going to get beat on right now, the screen, screen. pass. <laughs> so they'll have their guys kind of crowd the line of scrimmage, keep an eye on the backfield. And they'll probably play some zone coverage behind it. One thing that hurts a blitzing defense is a screen pass that you don't get to the quarterback. So I'd expect to see some changes. Outside to Hunter. Hunter, who breaks the tackle, gets first down yardage, cross midfield. And Hunter, who has cut up, come up with some nice plays and keeps this drive alive. Yeah, and Hunter's done most of his damage behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, this is just a great individual effort, running through arm tackles, running hard. Hunter's adding a little pep to his step. Really helping out his young freshman quarterback making his first start. 25-yard pickup on that last play for Hunter. First and 10 now from the Harvard 48-yard line. Jalen Tolbert leaves it up there, has a man wide open as the defender slipped and Casey Hawthorne collects it. Another trip into the red zone after this play. Yeah, and throwing the ball down the field. You know, buys himself a little time, waits for the route to clear, and able to throw a catchable ball and a great job by Casey Hawthorne, knowing where he was on the field of play, where it's not even close as to whether this was a catch or not. He got two feet plus in. 29-yard pass to Hawthorne. And Tolbert decides to take it along that left side, has some room and blocking, and the positive play that you talked about seeing on first down. Yeah, absolutely, and down in the red zone, and just reading his keys right there. I think he realized once Truman Jones was going down on the down block, he knew right away he was gonna pull it, call his own number, and picked up some good yardage on first down. Eden James in the backfield, but has a man in the end zone and catching it is Brennan Brown. What concentration, the one hand bobbled it, but brought it in. And the senior out of Dallas, Texas, celebrates after that 14 yard catch. Uh, what a fantastic play by Brennan Brown going to get this throw. This ball sailed on him, thrown a little high, but tremendous concentration to secure the catch. We saw Brown miss a block earlier against Thir Truman Jones, but made up for with a fantastic touchdown grab. So back-to-back -back scoring drives for the Bison. And Brennan Brown, who is played a number of different positions. Moved to tight end after coming over from playing some offensive line. And how about the hands and concentration for Brown bringing it in. You use a map in your car. Why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Now that's the shakaroni. Dang, that's huge. Oh, that's my piece of the shakaroni. That's the biggest one we make. Extra pepperoni, extra tease on that thing. <laughs> Somebody save me a slice. No. <laughs> they donate the dollar from every shakaroni to the Papa John's Foundation. Ah, uh, shakaroni. Oh, uh, bring it in, bring it in. Shakaroni. Get on beat, get on beat. Shakaroni. Ah, uh, shakaroni. Shake that wig on, come on. Oh, you guys were so off beat. Okay. All right, let's see. The redshirt freshman Jalen Tolbert getting the start today over Quentin Williams. Unsure of why Williams is not in full pads, but thus far, Tolbert, the last couple of drives, have helped to engineer 
seven points each trip down into the red zone, and it's a 17-14 ball game. And I'll tell you, if you're just tuning in, folks, this second quarter, things have really come alive. Both teams have combined for 28 points <laughs> in the second frame. And it's been exciting, and I think, you know, we've seen this young quarterback grow before us, completed a couple passes down the field, using his running backs as well, but really like the effort that they've gotten from Jared Hunter, the running back, to really help out in the passing game for Howard. That's Jack Bill on the return, across the 20, 25, and then tripped up by Carson Hinton. Well, Aiden Borgay has been the workhorse, as we mentioned, and Jay, he's an impressive running back. Oh, yeah, you see the vision, the ability to make would-be tacklers miss. Runs through arm contact. If you just put an arm on him, he's going to keep it moving like you're not even there. He's a guy that came in this game averaging over six yards per carry and has not disappointed behind this offensive line. Borgay has been a problem for the Bison defense. And what I like about Borgay is the fact that this is an all-Ivy second-team selection a season ago. And when you think about who they had in the backfield last year, Harvard was Aaron Champlin, who made the Dallas Cowboys practice roster. One of the last cuts made, but Borgay getting a breather. Shane McLaughlin starting off this drive for the Crimson. That's what surprised me. I thought the number of carries we saw from Borgay would be a little bit higher. I mean, at a certain point, he was averaging nine yards a carry. Then you take him out, you wonder, is he a little banged up, or is it by design where they want to see McLaughlin run the football? But McLaughlin only has three rushing attempts on the season. So I think a little bit of a surprise in changing it up in the backfield. Well, he sh shared the low today with Borgay. Remember, he came in and scored that touchdown, punched it in from about a yard out. And McLaughlin running on that right side. The sophomore who will likely take over as he can't play as a graduate in the Ivies. So it's four years and you're done. And Borgay looking to go out with the bang here as senior season, still on the sideline. Take a look at number one, Kim Wimberly in this situation. He's in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Charlie Dean with time connects with Oderman and Caden Oderman picks up the first down. And this is knowing football, knowing your protection. You want to bring a blitz four weak from the left side. Charlie Dean felt the pressure was coming, went to where the defense vacated the spot and threw a little flip pass to pick up the first down. Nice command from Charlie Dean. Well, coaches say he has the ability to be one of the top quarterbacks in all of Ivy League football this season as McLaughlin bounces to the outside. And whistles in the stoppage of play. Howard, this is second charge timeout of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. As Howard spins their second timeout of the half. Well, coming up, and just about a minute and 58 seconds of regulation here in the second quarter will bring you the performances of the Howard University Showtime Marching Band say, and the Ooh La La. We say, ladies and gentlemen, it's Showtime, showtime. with the Ooh La La's. Well, the numbers aren't what you normally see out of the HBC bands, one of the smaller ones you'll see. But entertaining. Nevertheless, look at you, Tiffany. Just, I wish the, the people at home could see you just looking at me like, yeah, yeah. I don't try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you with bands. <laughs> Howard Band is good. They, they, they perform well. They say, get more bang for your buck, as they like to say. Dean slings it out to Kim Wimberly, and Wimberly 
picks up the first down. Kelvin Washington is the band director for the Showtime Marching Band. Got a chance to spend right. some time up there with the Ula La's during that MIAC SWAT Challenge. You know, they're student athletes too. You know, they're on scholarship. They're, they're earning their keep. They work real hard. Absolutely. I used to wonder why sometimes they practice so hard, just as hard as the football team on many of these campuses. And the Showtime Band, no different. Big third down here for the Crimson. Correction, it was Wimberly who didn't pick it up, but there, the pass complete to Neville, and that's good enough to move the chains. Quick recognition. All you're looking for is Neville to just to slide out. Number 88, free release, pick up two yards upfield. When you're in that type of situation, you have to cloud the line of scrimmage, know where the down and distance marker is, and Xavier Rabot, a little bit too far away to make the tackle in time. Charlie Dean working with a minute and 20 remaining in the half and just throws it away with the defender Broken Burr coming his way. Broken Burr's a guy. They want him to be disruptive. He can play, and I, I give credit what I see. Here's a little difference I see. Howard's best D lineman is Broken Burr. Harvard's best D lineman is Truman Jones. Truman Jones has been unblocked a couple times. Broken Burr. They're accounting for him on every play. They're double teaming him. They're sliding protection his way, kind of neutralize him out of this game. Dean with the pass, going to Hatch again, already with one touchdown catch. What and it's play. batted away at the end. Oh. oh, in and out as Christian Brown was there on the coverage. And if he could have held on to it, it would have been another Touchdown Whoa. catch for Hatch. Let's take another look uh, at it. He makes the catch. I think he's turning. I thought this was a oh, oh. good job of the strip going to the ground. Good concentration, but this is football. Not giving up on the play was Christian Brown able to jar the ball loose at the very last second. Great look here. Now third and ten. Blitz. Pressure coming. Picked up. They go to Hatch again. And bobbled. Christian Brown once more on the coverage. Ooh, so uh, They almost got him. This yeah. is what you want. You're going to leave the middle of the field open. You see, this is a nicely thrown ball. But Ooh. second time in a row, consecutive plays that Hatch has not been able to secure the catch going to the ground. So trotting on to the field is the punter, Tasco. It would be a 54-yard attempt for Jonah LaPelle, but they elect to perhaps take the delay of game and then push back a little bit, give a little bit more space to try to pin him. Delay of game. Offense, number 91. Five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. If you're Howard's defense, you've got to be pleased because you walk away with a win going into the locker room. They got the stop. They kept points off the board, so not allowing Harvard to increase their lead. But they're playing with fire. I mean, they, they dodged a couple of good plays there and just not able to execute. But you take it, you take your victories how you can get them. Well, Jay, you're very familiar with the Howard Bison. Oh, yeah. Number seven, they called you Sky. You see, you see the accolades, the MEAC Hall of Famer, might I add, the Offensive Player of the Year in back-to-back -back seasons and that national championship. Oh, boy. One day I'm going to get you all some downloaded videos of me, you know, <laughs> uh, throwing the rock like we could. Maybe just go to the NFL stuff. I had a... Great career, me and my boys. We accomplished a lot. Uh, it was a team effort there. Something my coach just told me, though. My what, Steve coach, Wilson, right? Steve Wilson. He told me this the other day. He's like, Jay, when you came to Howard, we had the longest losing streak in the country. And when you left, we had the longest winning streak in the country. So I'm going to take that. So that, that, that makes me know I was a pretty good quarterback. I was a pretty good quarterback, along with my boys. But they had the longest losing streak in the country. Now, oh, <laughs> not here we go. Look. It's a team. It's a team. You do it all together, Jay. You do it all together. But you did help 
to turn things around, and that's exactly what Larry Scott is hoping to do now at the Mecca. And, uh, and I think, you know, partially because, you know, I was one of those guys, and Ted White came in and followed me, and then you had Greg McGee. So the quarterback position at Howard is it, kind of a special thing. I mean, Donald Carr and Lee DeBose before me, but it's one of those things where, you know, you got a lot of distractions. You have a lot of distractions there, and so I think as playing quarterback in that position, there's no better place to win and do your job and be respected than playing quarterback at Howard. But how do you deal with the distractions? So the youngster coming in right now started two or five, but he's eight and nine now. So he's starting to heat up and grow into the position. I mean, how about this? From your eye test, I'm going to ask, what have you seen from, from Tolbert that you like? I think he's been protected by the play call. And I think it's a very conservative play call, so too much to judge. Like, I haven't seen the, the arm strength. I think Williams throws a better deep ball. I've seen him miss a couple of those, but he, he threw the interception and didn't get rattled. And I think that shows you something where he's got a confidence about himself where normally you make a bad play as a freshman, you kind of go downhill. He settled in and got comfortable. High, but not too tall for the six foot five Matthew McDonald as a flag is out. I got rough in the passing, number 51. A little insight right there from the official. Yeah. He'll make the call. Well, that's his job. The yeah. referee protects Personal the quarterback. Foul, rough in the passer. Defense, number 51. 15-yard 15 penalty is added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Yeah, this is what you like. I mean, you'll see towards the end, he's going there launching on him. Yeah, you can't do that at all. Helmet comes off, but because there's a penalty call, he can stay in the game. And now if you're Howard, you're close to midfield, you have to be thinking about scoring some points before the half. Step on the gas pedal. Go for it. Well, 27 yards later after that 12-yard catch and 15-yard penalty from the 41. Tolbert rushed some pressure behind him and is able to get it out. And into the hands of Richie Ilaraza. They say it's a catch, so they're going to keep on hurrying up with 26 seconds remaining and no timeouts. Get to the line of scrimmage. Spike the ball. Don't worry about calling the play. It's a dead down. Spike it. When that official runs the clock, I would have gotten rid of the ball right away. Instead, they decide to run the play underneath there. Oh, Jared oh, Hunter immediately catch, hit by Jack McGowan. Timeout. But you need a timeout. And a flag comes out there's no timeouts remaining for Howard and Jared Hunter took a lot of punishment as Jack McGowan may have be called for targeting here and, you know, floats it there quarterback set him yep. up mm. defenseless player yeah, that's, that's going to be what starts the inquiry and he was a ball player but before he got the ball I think they call him a defenseless player our hit put on them. They'll, they'll take a look at this to see if it stands. Uh, in this moment, obviously, player safety, really important. But I love the sportsmanship shown afterward as Jake McGowan went over to make sure that Jared Hunter was OK. They high-fived and then ran back to their sidelines. So y y you have to at least appreciate that. And good to see Hunter pop up. Now, and, you know, I, I get the player safety thing. I'm big on that. But back in the day, as a quarterback, we would be blamed for that. You're thrown into a linebacker coming full speed, and that's a tough one for Jack McGowan. So are they picking up the flag, which... They haven't marked off the flag. Personal foul. Defense with target. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The previous play of targeting is under review. And this is going to be a tough one. Rule of the law, was he a defenseless player? Was there a launch? I didn't see a launch, and I didn't see solid contact with the crown of the helmet. I mean, could you say... He, I, 
it's it's one of those awkward positions because you're talking about Jay him coming in at full speed. I mean the ball thrown right towards a charging linebacker. How how does he hold up in that instance? Yeah, I mean do they His want momentum. him to go low. If he goes low, something happens. I mean. Is that helmet to helmet? If it's helmet to helmet, they normally hold the defensive player responsible. So. That's a tough one. Again, Jay, like the call on the field targeting. Now they have to see if there is evidence to reverse the call. Jack McGowan is heading into the receiver. The question called. of the defenseless player, but like, did you see crown of the helmet going? I no, did not. I did not, but I saw the helmet to helmet contact, but I did not see the crown of the helmet go. I, I thought it was just a football play where it was set up by the soft pass from the quarterback. You know, much as I'm an offensive guy, I do believe in player safety, but I want to know what could Jack McGowan have done differently. And that's what I would say. I mean, it's big because if, if this penalty stands, then He'll be, he'll be out of the ballgame. They'll have to watch. And he's their starting linebacker. But then I also see why the officials do it. I mean, the officials are taught, hey, if you think it's close, send it up to the booth. Let us review it. And, you know, and then we'll make the final determination. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think he was preparing to launch. I think he was preparing to come over and make the tackle. Bang, bang, play. I'd let him stay in the game. I, I'd pick up the flag. Well, in this delay, again, we've we've kind of gone through what the officials and the replay booth are looking at in terms of is it targeting or not? Was it a defensive player? That's one of the main questions that we were asking. Crown of the helmet, did he launch himself with that upward thrust? Is also a question mark or a marker that they're looking for. And again, just, just based on where Jack McGowan was, I don't know what other angle or play, like how else does he make that play? Scott, what, what does he do? And, and I really do think they're gonna, they should pick this up, but we've, we've seen it go different ways there. The ruling on the field of targeting has been reversed. The result of the play is a completed pass, second down, 18 seconds to go. Now, now be ready. That ball was caught in the field of play, so you have to think right now, when are they going to start that clock? I know they did the review, but when he blows that whistle, the clock's going to close. See, the game clock's going. Good job by Howard getting rid of the ball. Ilaraza finds the sideline, so stop will clock with 12 seconds to go and a fresh set of downs. And that's Richie Ilaraza, plays a slot and comes up with more tough catches for this Bison offense. Ilaraza, you talk about that tough catch. That one's incomplete as he tried to stretch out and get that one. Aaron Bickerton, the freshman kicker. Don't know how. Let's see, the, the longest attempt of the season. I don't think he has one. This is his first of the season. A 45-yard attempt for Bickerton. Eight seconds to go in the first half. The kick is up, does it have enough leg? And it does! 
does. First career field goal made by Aaron Bickerton and ties up the ball game. <laughs> Makes the kick and looks up to the sky. I got you. <laughs> Saying thank you to somebody, but wow, who would have thought? 17-17 tie at some point. Howard fights their way back into the game and just enough leg to get over the crossbar. I love the reaction from Bickerton. <laughs> Look at this. Says, Salute. Salute. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it up. Ah. Oh. He's pumped up. And the Bison should be too. They were able to even this game and they get the ball. Well, excuse me, Harvard gets the ball to start the second half. So important to go into the locker room with some momentum. Picked up and down. Two seconds before the end of the half. I have to be a little bit disappointed if, you, if you're Harvard. And it seemed like for a moment there, they were in complete control of that game in the second quarter. They had it going, but gave up a couple of big plays. And game, I think, which they probably outplayed the Bison most of the first half. Howard took momentum going into the locker room. 17 all after two. This truth and surface classic between two elite institutions, Harvard and Howard tied at 17 apiece. We'll be back after these messages. and service classic between Harvard and Howard. From Audi Field, we welcome you back in along with Jay Walker. I'm Tiffany Green. And well, we had the opportunity to be in Durham, North Carolina on Thursday as North Carolina Central hosted Morgan State in their MEAC opener. And I'll tell you this, the Eagles soaring high. Absolutely. I mean, it was a big win for North Carolina Central, the number two ranked team in all of HBC football. But it was a national coming out party for Davius Richards. The green-eyed bandit playing quarterback for them can flat out get it done. He had a fantastic game. He showed the arm strength. He showed the mobility. He showed the leadership. Davius Richard was clearly the best player on the field, and he got it done in a big way on Thursday night. And many consider him one of the front runners for the MEAC Offensive Player of the Year. And when you look at the numbers that he put up, accounted for nearly 300 total yards of offense and a career best six total touchdowns for the junior. And so you talked about the number two team in all of HBCU football. Well, Jay, as we take a look at our HBCU news and notes, something that is of mention, we'll now travel to Orangeburg, South Carolina for another big game, including the Eagles. Absolutely. Get your popcorn ready. This is, without a doubt, the game on the schedule everybody anticipated. North Carolina Central, the new kids on the block, going down to Orangeburg, taking on the reigning Cricket Celebration Bowl champions, the HBCU national champion, South Carolina State Bulldogs, led by their coach, Buddy Pugh. You got the new kid on the block, Trey Oliver, and the old dog that won't quit, and Buddy Pugh. I love it. That's selling it. It's hype it up. I love it, Jay Walker. Meanwhile, out of Tallahassee, Florida a and hiring a new AD, Tiffany Dawn Sykes, now takes over at the helm. Is, is Tallahassee big enough to have two Tiffany's there? I mean, you know, <laughs> Tiffany Green, my partner's an alumnus there. Now they're adding another Tiffany. Don't get jealous, Tiff. It's all right. She comes over from the <laughs> Ivy ranks, uh, last her stint at Dartmouth. Meanwhile, you talked about that Cricket Celebration Bowl. Circle your calendars and make sure you're in Atlanta December 17th, that game kicking off noon Eastern on ABC. Who will win it, the MEAC or the SWAC? Well, you'll have to find out and wait until December. An absolutely gorgeous day in Washington, D.C. Back at the half between Harvard and Howard. And 
Time to take a look now at Jay's HBCU Power Rankings. And Jay, how does it all shake out? Uh, I think I'm getting my list right. My list is getting better. Prairie View a and was the number two team. They took a loss, so they moved to number five. Bubba McDowell still has him in contention in a very uh, complicated, competitive, swack western part of the conference there. Alcorn State, Fred McNair, three consecutive victories for the Braves. They're playing their best football right now. Let's go number three. Let's go on down to Tallahassee. The Rattlers just keep hanging around and winning the games they're supposed to, taking care of business on the field. Number two could be one of the hottest teams in the country. They would normally be number one in the regular year, but North Carolina Central, Trey Oliver has the Eagles soaring very high. The number one team in the country, I mean, they're running away with this. Jackson State, they can do it on offense. They can do it on defense. They've got the swag. They have the star power. And they got a coach named Coach Prime who wins the headlines every week. Southern University is on the bubble. I can't quite figure them out, Tim. Sometimes they look great. Sometimes they look bad. We'll see as they take on Alcorn State this week to see if they can maybe jump into Jay's top five. Tell everybody, who's top five is it? Jay. Jay's top five. You know what? That's a great segue because coming up after the break, <laughs> we'll get into Jay's give me five, okay? Yeah, that's right. You heard it. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green. So much history around our nation's capital, the World War II Memorial here. Several points to check out around the district. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green back here with you. And Jay, I'm excited about what's on the way because your <laughs> Give Me Five segment is going to provide us a list of, uh, I think, some amazing people. I mean, I had to go deep. You know, we could have talked about, you know, some of the athletes. We could have talked about all the politicians you know, out there. But I th found something unique in this week's Jay's Give me five. <laughs> how about this? We call this the battle of the HU, Harvard University, Howard University. Well, how about the battle for Hollywood U? Who's got the most Hollywood star power? Let's start it off with, let's go up north. How about Harvard University? Natalie Portman coming in number five. Conan O'Brien. Now, this is Hollywood U, so our colleague James Brown, who was a mentor to me when I was at Howard University, he's gone a little Hollywood, so he's number three on the list. Matt Damon, and one of my favorite actors of all time, the fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. Tommy Lee Jones, my impression <laughs> of him, and I got on the bubble, Rashida Jones done that, so a little surprise that Harvard has as much know. talent as they have. That's right. So doing something there, so I thought that was unique there. So that's the first match up there. So Harvard with a surprise with a sleeper, a lot of star power there. Indeed, okay, so I know you're going to boast here. So need we not even sit anyone on the edge of their seats any longer. It was so hard for me just to pick five for Howard, a school we could have gone on with slab after slab, but here's a list I came up with, just Hollywood. So I'm not talking about the singers like that, just Hollywood. So let's go with Taraji P. Henson, who was on the yard when I was there, Felicia Rashad, everybody's mother from the Cosby Show, Anthony Anderson, who was hot as can be right now for a blackish fame, Diddy, Diddy <laughs> the Entertainer. Nobody's more Hollywood than him. And hey, rest in peace to the Black Panther himself, Chadwick Boseman. On the bubble, I put Nick Cannon. So left off like... Debbie Allen could have been on that list. So, so many more people that could have been on there. I see Davis, folks of that nature. But I think the star power surprised us. So, pretty good matchup. Jay, I'm going to give you credit. You got it right. You got it right. And it was I a fantastic get list right. on both sides. I don't know about that. I, I, I always get it right. I can't right. necessarily say that I agree with that. However, you knocked it out the park well, on it, this list. It, I'm sure I'll hear about it. So, if you want to question Jay's Gimme Five, which they always do, Hit us up, hit me up on Black College Live, at Black College Live, look forward to it. When it comes to star power, nobody does it better than the Mecca. In Jay's opinion. How about <laughs> this, we'll be able to tell you more about some of the famous alumni from both of these institutions. Meanwhile, great football game, 17 all. ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. I tell you, a gorgeous day here from Southwest DC, Audi Field, the site of the Truth and Service Classic between Harvard and Howard. And that second quarter, Jay, it was scores delight. 17 points for Howard, 14 for Harvard, and really it was a, a battle of wills there. Absolutely. We know that Howard 
has been getting off the slow starts all season long. No surprise here. But the fact that they battled back to tie this game up at halftime, we saw their freshman quarterback grow up before our eyes. So that's a good sign for Howard University to get it going late. Harvard, uh, they got to get back to basics. Running the football, one of the best rushing attacks in the whole country. I thought they got away from that a little bit after they got the lead. Well, three points is what Howard Harvard jumped out to, a 3 nothing advantage. And then you talk about Shane McLaughlin, who's able to punch it in. Andrew Borg, Aiden Borgay came in as the feature guy, but McLaughlin gets his touchdown. Yeah, then the screen pass has really helped Howard University get it going there. They settled down the quarterback there, got their first touchdown on a screen, but Harvard came right back and answered with their own with a little slip screen, make the bubble screen go over the top. They got this, they increased their lead, but then Howard wouldn't go away. Finding some ways with a fantastic catch from the tight end, Brennan, making that, Brennan Brown making that concentrated grab. And then right here before the half, I really thought helped them out. Aaron Bickerton kicked his first field goal of the season to tie up this game and give the Bison momentum going into halftime. When you look at the numbers, pretty evenly matched between the two teams. We'll see how one can create some separation here in the second half. Yeah, you know, they got away from it. You know, at a certain point, their running back had for Harvard. I mean, he had 85 yards rushing on his own. They gave it back a little bit, stopped featuring him. I look for them to get back to basics in the second half. And Jalen Tolbert, if he can finish up how he finished up the first half, hey, look out, this Bison offense started getting momentum. Jalen Tolbert getting his first career start, still unsure of the status of why Quentin Williams didn't, but Tolbert, the freshman, making the most of his opportunity. And that's what you gotta do, and I really liked how the team kind of rallied around him. The running back, Jared Hunter, Ian Willer, Eden James, they both showed some flashes, some spark to be problems for the Harvard defense. Then on the other side there, you see Charlie Dean, quarterback for Harvard, hit some big plays, but didn't really get on his mark as we thought. But I do think that Aiden Borgo is as good as advertised. Borgay, we talked about coming into today's game. Top five in all of FCS and rushing yards per game. 163 yards in his last outing in that win over Cornell. And on pace to do something similar here this evening. I thought the Showtime band did a good job at halftime. Entertain the crowd. They did their part. And, uh, you saw the star power of Howard University. Hmm? You, you always team, you ask because you're in DC. We have star power. So who, who did you get to meet at halftime? We got to see Boris Kojo or Kojo and uh, Nicole Ari Parker. Uh, just casually just walking by. Just I casually, mean. you know, ha hanging out. Uh, to take in this football game. It was pretty cool, and I fangirl, you know, for a I was, second. I like how you handled yourself. You acted like it was just no big deal. Like, <laughs> see, that's what we do at Howard. Howard, because we're so used to the star power. Like, it was when I was in school, it was no problem to hear that uh, Mike Tyson was on the yard or Allen Iverson's on the yard today. Pat, you, we get used to that. So you, you did, you held your own, you held your cool. You, you did an overall fan, so, you know, but to us Bison, that's just another day. That's what we do. What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't homer too much here, Jay Walker. Second half action underway. I'm just saying. I can call it like I see it as Shane McLaughlin. <laughs> the only thing I'm saying is this, and we'll leave it alone. If Boris Kojo and his wife Nicole Ari Park show up at FAMU, they're going to need a whole security detail. Here, you can just kind of hey, be yourself, enjoy yourself. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> Well, Tim Murphy will see his offense go back onto the field. Charlie Dean, 8 of 15, 121 yards. And that touchdown pass to Ledger Hatch in the first half. And now we'll see how the Crimson move the ball to start the third quarter. And Ledger Hatch showed the ability to get behind the Howard secondary. So I think you have to pay attention to Ledger Hatch getting behind your defensive backs. Aiden Borgay running the football. 
Another typical Borgay run there. We talked about it. First down, nothing really there, but he still picked up three yards. So combination of Hatch, who you're taking a look at there, number 13, and Borgay on the ground and in the air could be troublesome. On second and seven. Dean tries to zip it in there and does so, finds Haven Montefalco, and Montefalco picks up the first down. And that's good concentration by Montefalco and the patience, Charlie Dean growing through his progressions. And I also like the poise of Charlie Dean coming in on the road. The go-go music is playing here around Audi Field, and the senior is dialed in as he's trying to help his team come out of the locker room and get into the end zone on their opening drive of the third quarter. And I had to talk to Coach Murphy earlier. He was talking about Dean has the potential to be one of the greats in this conference. And then he, he kind of casually said, you know, he could be like Ryan Fitzpatrick, the greatest quarterback in the history of this conference. Fitzpatrick. Dean gets it away before the pressure. Finding oh, nice. Ledger Hatch again, and Ledger Hatch caught it. 44 yards. Touchdown. Kind of warned the Bison that was coming, right? We said Ledger Hatch has had the ability to get behind the Bison secondary on a couple of occasions, and Robert Jones, the cornerback, you know, can't get beat deep in a nicely thrown ball with some pressure on him. Gets behind the safety and the cornerback. That cannot happen. Nice throw from Charlie Dean. Great route and catch by Ledger Hatch, who dropped two in the first half. He just made up for it down. <laughs> The extra point attempt is up and through. Well, just as you invoke the name of Ryan Fitzpatrick, Charlie Dean saying, hey, look, I'm trying to become a legend before I close out my career at Harvard. Finds Ledger Hatch in the end zone for the 44-yard strike. When it comes to doing, getting what you need starts with our app. Need it today? Pick it up curbside. Need it to you, we deliver. Your trunk, our trucks. However you get it, we've got you. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Now that's the shakaroni. Dang, that's huge. Oh, that's my piece of the shakaroni. That's the biggest one we make. Extra pepperoni, extra teas on that thing. <laughs> Somebody save me a slice. No. <laughs> they donate the dollar from every shakaroni to the Papa John's Foundation. Ah, uh, uh, shakaroni. Oh, uh, bring it in, bring it in. Shakaroni. Get on beat, get on beat. Shackle 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 Shake that wig on, come on. Shackle 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 10 of 17, 171 yards, but also doing a good job of protecting the football, and his favorite target has been Ledger Hatch. They've connected on two scores. Yeah, Hatch, with the ability to get behind this defensive secondary, Kim Wimberly's done a pretty good job as well. And we throw in Aiden Borgay, 24 points for this Harvard offense team that comes in averaging just about 30 points a game on pace to do so. We'll see how Jalen Tolbert comes out here after the intermission. We talked about how he finished off the first half strong and making his first ever collegiate start. They get going from their own 25-yard line. Jarrett Hunter avoids a tackler. Nice cut back there. And on first down, they pick up enough to move the chains. Where would they be without Jarrett Hunter today? I mean, this style of running that you just saw is indicative of how he's played all game, whether it's screen passes, catching balls out of the backfield, downhill running. Jarrett Hunter has been the best offensive weapon 
for Howard University so far. The offense looks to the sideline to get the call. The handoff to Hunter. Again, patient running, cut back, and James Herring was the first to greet him. Staying ahead on first down, picking up positive yards. I'm starting to see Harvard kind of challenge the Bison offense, realizing that Tolbert's not throwing the ball a lot downfield, playing straight. Man-to-man -man coverage across the board. Four-man rush trying to see if he can pick him apart. You see Truman Jones off the line, number 90. Ian White and anticipating that run. Again, a number of crimson tacklers to bring down Hunter. So third down and about four or five. So you know, one look that we've seen Harvard do a lot is they like to send both linebackers up the same gap. So whether or not they get to you is going to be a matter of your timing, but you can't block three people coming through the same gap. Howard has not been able to figure that out. And that's why they've been able to get pressure on the quarterback. The Bison four for eight on third downs. Eaton James protecting, going down the field, and Casey Hawthorne can't come up with it. Oh, you have to make that throw. I mean, that's what you want. They were bringing a safety blitz, and then they switched it to a corner blitz. You've got your slot wide receiver against a linebacker. Throw it out there. Let him run. Got to say, it, I think Quinn Williams completes that pass. You know, Quinn Williams throws a nice deep ball. Missed him there. you got to win that matchup. Look and out. Block punt. That was Victor Tatamy. Or was that James Herring? That was Herring who Ruling came up. With a block punt out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Huge special Harvard teams ball. play. I mean, how do you do this? You have two people to block. Oh, 72 slides over. Mental error. Slid over when he didn't. He had somebody to block. Special teams comes through for Harvard. That's the senior out of Dallas, Texas, James Herring. One of the safeties in the secondary for the Crimson, also playing on special teams, and now sets the offense up with the ball on Howard's 12-yard line. Fourth block punt this season for Harvard. Untouched. I mean, lack of communication by the upman. Borgay along that right side, and Robert Jones making the tackle. So Aiden Borgay, who is giving the Bison a steady dose of hard running today, stays in the backfield with the cut. And one of the type of... So let's go back to this block punt. Number 72, Jack Forsythe. All you have to do is identify where they're coming from. They're bringing two, so you've got two. Just talk. He slid all the way in, allowed him to kind of unblock. That's just communication. Tap him. Hey, I got the guy on the right. You got the guy up the middle. Mental error, poor execution by Howard, and has Harvard with the ball in great position. Similar play this time. Trying to charge in and held up just short of the goal line. And that'll bring up fourth and goal as, well, that's a first down, excuse yeah. me. So first and goal. And Larry Scott running over to try to take the timeout as. Ooh. Timeout on the field. Howard is the first charge timeout of the half. His defense wasn't set, so we will step aside as well. 9.43 to go, and Harvard with the ball on the goal line. Jazz on the, jazz on the field. First and goal. 
And Borgay punches it in. So first touchdown of the ball game for Aiden Borgay. Can I bring up two gripes? Sure. One, they got the first down. I don't think the Howard defense knew they had the first down. So the Howard defense starts celebrating on that. They get a first down. Then they've got the ball on the one foot line, and they call a timeout because they're celebrating. But at this point, let them, let them score. I mean, you're getting ready to be down by two scores, and you're going to need that timeout. So let's mark that. You may need that second time, that third timeout that you just kind of gave away with not knowing down the distance and the ball team not understanding. This is where things start to fall. They start to crumble downhill or roll downhill. That's an example of it right there. Great point, Jay. And, and again, that scoring drive for Harvard was all set up because of that Tim Herring block punt. Two guys. They only rushed two guys after the punter. They only rushed two. They had punt return set up. They rushed two. Ball's blocked. And then they get it down to their guy, Aiden Borgay, from the one-yard line. And just like that. Just like that. I mean, game was tied 17-17 six minutes ago, five minutes ago. Now the Howard Bison find themselves down by 14 and give credit to Harvard coming out of the locker room, gaining, gaining momentum right back. Will you break down the game by game stats for Aiden Borgay, 127 yards in that season opener win against Mary Mack, 131. They needed him both games as he had to come from behind and won. Got slow starts, as we mentioned, and nearing the century mark here today. Ian Wheeler on the return across the 15 and met at the 20-yard line. Hard contact there as he's brought down at the 22. So what do we say now? You, you always say... It's that part of the game you asked me, Jay, what do they need to do to get it going? Well, they need to go back to what Coach said. When their backs are against the wall, they fight. Right now, your backs are against the wall. Basically a home game, even though it's a neutral site. You're down by 14. You've got a freshman quarterback making his first start, facing adversity. How much fight do the Bison have? Well, they were trailing by 10 at one point in this ball game. They were able to answer with the score and then tie it up at 17 all before going into the half, but bobbled. Tolbert still holds on to it and Hezekiah collects it, no gain on the play. Well, Harvard was able to put up 14 points in less than two minutes here in this third quarter. We'll see how Scott Markey's defense can hold strong. Trailing back the screen. And there's the big man, Christian Carter. And Christian Carter gives him some breathing room out to near the 50, a gain of 27. Tight end screen. So he fakes like he's going out in the flats, comes back. Fortunately, he wasn't called for that ball being thrown, caught beyond the line of scrimmage. But Carter, big target, six foot seven, inch tight end out of Detroit, Michigan. They say he improves every week. Built like a basketball player, but starting to grow into that body a little bit. He has some tools. Wildcat formation, the handoff to Wheeler. Wheeler going to the outside. The nice cut, and Wheeler with a nice move, and that's good enough for a first down. Gain of 11. There you go, let the secondary guys help. We saw Carter make the big play with the tight end screen, and now you've got the running back. The, the feature of this offense, the running back play has always been pretty consistent with some good ones. Now we're trying to respond. And Hawthorne able to slip through. Hawthorne with a nice run on first down. Well, this Harvard defense coming in sixth best in all of FCS in terms of stopping the run, only allowing about 74 yards on the ground. And 
Howard able to pick up 83 in this game, and they've got second and one coming up. Yeah, using the misdirection with the Wildcat. You know they're going to run the ball, but they're giving you misdirection with it. Able to find a couple creases. Wheeler will go to the sideline after picking up the first down, and Tolbert trots back onto the field. Something that Harvard does, they bring in a fresh set of D linemen. They bring them in four at a time, stick with their philosophy of having fresh legs on the field. Mm -hmm. Hunter on the carry, tries to stutter step and wrapped up at the ankles by Truman Jones. So when Howard had some success running the ball, they had the second screen D-line in there. Well, you're starting to show you're going to run it. That's when they bring in Truman Jones and Thor Griffin. And the starters are trying to take that momentum back. We mentioned the name Thor Griffin. Isn't that a... <laughs> Outstanding name for a football player. for a football player indeed. The name and the size fit according to the coaching staff. Number 50 in the screen, playing defensive tackle. And making the stop is Matt Hudson. But Thor, there he is, the junior, who was great for this team last year led the team in tackles for loss, but the story of how he ended up at Harvard just wanted to get on the radar of Tim Murphy. And so he just said, I'm going to send some videos as a 12-year-old showing me playing hockey and all that good stuff. And the New Hampshire kid found his way down to Massachusetts. Now third and five for this Howard offense. Eden James collects it and nowhere to go, and great play made and stop in the backfield. That's Nate Leskovic. Good recognition from the defensive end. He's lined up outside and recognizes the ball's going out there, chases it down, nowhere for Eden James to go. Loss of five on the play. And now... Bickerton on to attempt the 42-yarder. Remember, he made a 45, 44-yarder back in the second quarter. Up, oh, and that's blocked. So great special teams play from Harvard that we've seen. The block punt by James Herring, and then the block field goal from the defense. And I believe that, that may have been Truman Jones. Let's look at the who elevation. Got in there. Yeah. By Harvard. Block. Ball you know, really, it. Harvard, first uh, down. Yep. Really doesn't have a chance. Timeout on the field. Media timeout. Let's see who's bringing the flavor. Presented by McDonald's. Check out Charlie Dean. Charlie Dean. Hurting them with the deep ball this game. Been able to get behind the secondary a couple times, standing tall in the pocket, and dropping dimes. With this guy, Ledger Hatch, they've been able to connect him. Been some flavor on the deep ball kind for this Harvard offense. Well, this coaching staff talked about just how terrific of an arm talent he is. And Coach Murphy said more specifically, he could be top three all-time at Harvard. And this is a game where he can build on, but this is exactly what the coaching staff would hope to see from their senior quarterback coming off of a late-season injury a season ago. I know earlier we were talking about how good he thought he could be and one of the greatest. See, my era, and I had to tease, I'm going to tease Jay Fiedler. Jay Fiedler was always the best guy ever come out of the out of Harvard as a conference, even though he went to Dartmouth and played in the NFL. But yeah, Fitzmagic, I, I get the answer to Fitzmagic, you know. Kevin Fitzpatrick, probably the greatest quarterback in the conference. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> well, you think about Ryan Fitzpatrick announces retirement this season after.
after 17 years in the league, last with the Washington Commanders in 2021. Now you expect this to be difficult for Howard to get back in this. Harvard with a lead, with a rushing attack. Probably keep the ball on the ground a little bit more. But it would be really good if Howard could get off the field right now because you got to get the ball back for that offense to give them as many opportunities to put points on the board as possible. The blitz coming. And the pass incomplete as Xavier Robio was running right in the face of Charlie Dean. Yeah, big play, a good job of Robio getting there, timing up the snap count from his free safety position. Charlie Dean knew he was coming and had to get rid of the football. So the punting unit back on, uh, Sebastian Tasco is set to boot it away. A.J. Boyd, ready to receive it, standing and catching it at the 30. A little stutter step and nowhere to go. Good special teams by Harvard. 43-yard punt, loss of two on their return. Well, Jay, when you think about Harvard and Howard, we talked about the elite and prestigious academic institutions that they are. And, you know, this is back to back games that Larry Scott playing against Ivy League contenders. Yale and now the Crimson. And they've got some work to do to try to get back in this one. Low snap, bad snap. But making something positive out of it, gain of two. And, and the hope is for, for Howard, you play a tough non-conference schedule. So so the one and four record, you know, it was tough. You know, they lost Alabama State, good team. They went down and played up a level when they took on uh, the South Florida, mm -hmm. they took on there, and then the Ivy League. So they're hoping that they're getting ready for conference play. You know, so if they can get it going in the right direction in conference and settle down and get it going at the right time, you never know what's going to happen. And this is a one and one So next year, Howard will travel to Harvard to play them once again. The basketball teams played last season. And this is a concerted effort and commitment on, on both ends to create that connection and pipeline. And I thought it was interesting what the Harvard coach said, Coach Murphy, when he said all of his African-American players had ties to HBCUs in some way, shape, or form or another, whether it was a relative, best friend, classmate. So they were excited about the challenge, the charge of coming down here. He wanted to play in the Washington, D.C. market, which has a number of kids on this roster. So hats off to both programs. You know, the athletic director, Kerry Davis, Coach Larry Scott from Howard, and Coach Murphy for having the vision to do something outside the box, a little outside thinking. And I love the fact in talking with the deputy AD for Harvard, Eulander Wells, he said, look, we were supposed to even have a friendly debate between the Harvard and Howard debate teams. It was called off, but it's scheduled for next year. They've, yeah. got, they've got it on the books. Yeah, because Howard won that last year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that. How, Howard won that debate last year, kind of surprised some people outside the family, but I was not surprised. It's what you've come to expect. <laughs> yeah. Is that correct, Jay? Yeah. I mean, everywhere we go, Tiff, they ask, what's up with Howard football? And when you're at one and four, you're an academic institution. <laughs> and when we go to four and one, oh, wait, wait, we ball. We want to get to that point again. Harvard offense back on the field. Borgay avoids the first tackler, sip, slips through. And the intuitive running that we've seen from Aiden Borgay, Coach Murphy told us yesterday, look, 
this guy just has a nose for the hole. You saw it there. And, you know, also, what I like is even though he may make a move to go sideways, he gets back downhill in a hurry. So he has patience, but still has the wherewithal to realize playing running back is not about going east-west. It's about going north and south. Okay, waiting, waiting. And a short gain on the play. 19 rushes now for Aiden Borgay. 95 yards to go along with a touchdown. Senior out of Franklinville, New Jersey. Now on third and five. Dean passing it, whipping it over to Ledger Hatch and Hatch near the first down marker and he picks it up with a gain of six. And command of the offense, Howard ran a man-to-man -man coverage, one robber high. When you get the one high free safety, it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And me and Coach Murphy talked about it. Rarely do you see the quick out thrown in football or the out route. Well, Charlie Dean showing you he can do it. End of the third quarter. Howard up by two scores and a great look at our nation's capital here in D.C. game after two however Harvard has come out and scored 14 unanswered points in that third quarter and now they start the fourth quarter thanks to Ledger Hatch had a couple of touchdowns who has been one of the go-to targets for Charlie Dean here in this one from the 31 rolling to his left Dean looking downfield too tall for Hatch pass incomplete that'll bring up second down and missed throw right there. Ledger Hatch was open for quite a while, but Charlie Dean, a little bit aggressive, getting a little bit greedy, trying to get that throw downfield instead of taking what the defense gave him. By the time he came back down the hatch, feet were not proper alignment. Ball got away from him. They swing it out to Kim Wimberly. Wimberly, who's got speed and some space along that sideline. And across midfield down near the 45 as Jabari Knight what? pushes him out. Yeah, take a look at Tyler Neville, number 88, the tight end. That's how you seal the edge. Good job of sealing the edge. They get two tight ends down the field. Look at that running lane there. He could have gone inside or outside. Nice execution. Out of the backfield is Borgay, and Borgay puts on a little move and brings Terrence Holland, the defender, with him. The versatility being shown now of Aiden Borgay. Too many weapons for Howard to try and defend. Hatch has been good. We've seen Wimberly, their best player, show some flashes, and Borgay been their bell cow along with Charlie Dean from the quarterback position. Borgay trying to cut through there and still able to sliver <laughs> through and pick up positive yardage. Look, now when this ball was snapped how many yards did you think he was going to get? Nah, maybe one or two. Maybe stuff at the line of scrimmage but the good runners with the forward lean after the low snap. Let me watch this. Watch where contacts made. That's at the line of scrimmage behind it. They ran past him. Christian White, that, that's not the tackling you need. You allow him to pick up four yards on a play where should have been tackled at the line of scrimmage or for a loss. Dean looking, hatch there, catch made. 
and that's near the first down mark, about a yard short. Well, Tim Murphy, who has a very experienced bunch, a veteran group of guys, and he says, you know, we're, we're a solid unit, currently 2-0 in the Ivy League. We're going to try to vie for a title, the last one coming for them in 2015. Ninth play of this drive. Again, cut, step, and first down. Well, he's closing in on Cam Coza for the most Ivy League titles, can tie it up if he's able to win it this year. Carm Coza, excuse me. And so when you think about the job that, you know, he's done, again, we talked about he's just been, he, he embodies all that Harvard football is. Dean with pressure hatch right there, but good breakup by Xavier Robio for free safety. Good job on the pass breakup, but once again, we're seeing Ledger Hatch get behind the secondary. You are not supposed to be able to have the ability to get behind safeties. But there, the throw, just a little bit behind him, allowing Robio to get back in the play and make the pass break up. So more than four and a half minutes gone by on this drive. Playing man-to-man -man coverage. Watch Wimberley, number one, in the slot. Low snap. And Dean takes it and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And credit Kenny Gallup with the sack. Big play from Gallup, almost as if it was a design quarterback run. So Gallup hold the outside edge and then make the tackle. Big play for the Bison. See if they can come up with a stop here on third and long. Be a good time for Howard to get a sack, maybe try and get Harvard out of field goal range. Instead, he connects with Oderman. And Oderman brought down by Robert Jones. So a gain of five, not enough, but that'll bring on the kicking unit to try to tack on three more. A big field goal. You make this field goal here, you put Howard down by three scores. And in the fourth quarter, clock becomes your enemy if you're Howard, so they really need to try and get some kick block on this one. They would really love to come up with the missed field goal. 35-yard attempt for LaPel. It's up, and it's through. Stretching the lead out, 34-17, Harvard on top. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's Black and Positively Golden Movement, elevating the next generation of black excellence. <laughs> Does Kieran. Great look at the Jefferson Memorial 34-17 back here in that, Washington, D.C. That is so, my favorite view. You know, I favorite? live here in the DMV. Okay. Nothing like driving by, seeing the, the pond, and that's where the cherry blossoms are mm -hmm. a certain time of year. It's always one of the more scenic monuments, I feel, that I drive by. And always, no matter how many times you drive by, you always want to slow down and take a peek at it. I think that for all of the monument and many of the buildings around Washington, D.C., I mean, you're spoiled with it yeah. and seeing it all the time, but the great architecture, obviously, the history, the museums. It's just... So, it's a great place to visit and be. Yeah, the, the African American Museum is unique because it's a brown building. Mm -hmm. you, know, so you see great. the brown building, but you know, I'd say I drive by the monument enough. That that doesn't really do it for me. I get it. It stands up. You see it, but you see it from so far away. But that Jefferson is the one you can drive by. And you, it looks just like you saw those pictures, how nice and scenic. So, 
Lincoln Memorial. You like the Lincoln? That's that's my fave. Just in case anybody well, cares out there. <laughs> I'd say it's it's good when you get out of your car to walk up to it, and then you're looking up at, at, at Lincoln sitting in the chair and everything. That's a good one. Then you got the monument on the other side of it. Right. But visually in your car. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see that much in your car. I mean, I love the Martin Luther King Memorial as well, but yes. you have to get out of your car and drive and, and walk to it. But still, so much history in this city. Look out. And that one was a gimme right into the hands He's not of done. the defense. And there's still some room as Gavin Shipman, the sophomore out of Alabaster, Alabama, comes up with the pick. First of the season for Shipman. I just wonder where is this ball going? I mean, three red jerseys over there. You know, that's just, that's just poor quarterback play right there. If, if they cut you off from the rollout, get rid of the football. But a good job of just drifting to where the quarterback's eyes take you by Gavin Shipman. Ill-advised throw by Tolbert, his second interception of the game. And Ten minutes and 12 seconds to go, and we'll see if Harvard can keep tacking on points. Scott Woods picks it up. They've outscored Howard 17 to nothing since coming out of the locker room. Normally, Howard has been a second-half football team. Mm -hmm. Not today. Dean's numbers on the game. And still with time to add more. Howard showing blitz, falls off. And McLaughlin tries to do a little juke move and not fooled and tackled and brought down. Gallup and Brown. Or well, Harvard, the largest athletic Division I program. In the Ivy League? On the earth. <laughs> <laughs> 42 varsity sports. And if you've ever been to Cambridge, you, you will have likely seen, you know, rowing and lacrosse shirts and soccer shirts. I mean, I think I was told about 1,300 of their 6,000 undergraduates are student athletes. Nice move by Woods and Woods being banged around but staying on his feet and picks up the first down. Now, can you help me out with something? This, I'm a little naive when it comes to the, the Olympic sports, as they call it. Mm -hmm. So Harvard has a rowing team. Is rowing the same as crew? Yes. They're the same sport? Okay. Yes. So why do, some, why do some schools call it crew, some schools call it rowing? I think it's just a preference, tomato, tomato. <laughs> okay. Never knew that. So the, we're only but the yeah, they are crew. interchangeable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Forty-two that's varsity a lot. sports. That, that, that's that a lot. is a lot. And you know, to think that you know Ivy League is a kind of like non-scholarship league. So this is a not easy to get into either of these institutions. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Tower, but, record enrollment mm -hmm. uh, for this year. I think their enrollment jumped by 29%. Call a little bit of the Vice President Harris effect, which rightfully so, and Harvard's always going to be over enrolled, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot of people that wish they would accept more. But I think, Jay, I was expecting uh, we talked about it at the half, and, and I think it's, it's worth bringing up again uh, in just a little bit. Your gimme five. I, I, I would be curious to see how you came up with a gimme five for a game like today. Yeah, well, sometimes you got to get creative. You know, what, do you, what do you all call it? Do research. <laughs> you know, 
for those people in academia. Did my research and came up with, I think, a very interesting Gimme Five. It's called a Battle of the HU Gimme Five. Okay. To you. Now I'm going to sound biased. I consider this a real Battle of HU. Like when, when we played at school down south, that, that, they're, oh, they're, you, they're you HI. Mean they're, they're the Institute. Hampton the Institute. University? No, they're the Institute. <laughs> <laughs> Howard and Harvard, this is real HU. Hampton tried to finagle their way into the conversation. On the football field, Hampton is saying they are the real HU. The charge and surge in by McLaughlin as he's helped in from three yards out, is able to push it in. Second touchdown of the night and of the season for Shane McLaughlin. Just a surge. At this point, you know, we mentioned earlier, you know, Harvard runs the football. They like to overload the side. So they had number 62, Ben Scoggin, come from his right side, pull left, give him that surge, just enough room, across the goal line, in the opinion of the officials for the score. Six plays, 32 yards. For the drive, just under four minutes taken off the clock. And the Crimson have come out of the locker room red hot. Well, coming up after the break, Jay's Give Me Five, a battle of Hollywood You. All right, Tiff, how about this? The battle of the HU, how about the battle of the Hollywood U? Which HU has the biggest impact in Hollywood? Harvard, that list is pretty impressive. Natalie Portman, Conan O'Brien, sports casting legend, D.C. native, DeMatha High School native, James Brown. Matt Damon, mm. one of my favorite actors of all time, Tommy Lee Jones, and on the bubble, I got Rashida Jones. Impressive list of Hollywood star power there. Any, anybody you would be, switch up? No, no, I, I I love that list, and, and and quite honestly, I appreciate that you did the research because I didn't know, like I didn't know Conan O'Brien went to Harvard. Maybe maybe I was living under a rock to some. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I went with the entertainment version. You yeah. know, politically, it would have been a good matchup, too. But That would have been interesting as well. I, I but, my but, but eight U.S. presidents <laughs> coming out of Harvard, I, I think they may have the nudge there. So if you did that for, for Harvard, then I'm curious for, for Howard. So you want to see what's up with Howard? Yeah, I do. All right, let me show you what Howard's got the star power list for Hollywood in the battle HU for Hollywood. You, Taraji P. Henson. Felicia Rashad, American Muslim Mom, Anthony Anderson, Blackish Fame. One word, Diddy. <laughs> we got the Black Panther, rest in peace, Chadwick Boson. We've got Nick Cannon, left off Ossie Davis, left off Debbie Allen. So if we're not going to win the game on the football field, we're going to win this battle of Hollywood. So <laughs> I'm giving the advantage to the Bison with a good fight from Harvard. What would also, I think, would have been what I thought you were going to go with, the more obvious choice of just the nat uh, the notable alum, the famous alum that have come from Ooh, both of these institutions. Good. We talked about the U.S. presidents. Yeah. Howard has the acting vice, vice president. president and Kamala Harris. Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Oh, his name popped up. <laughs> I mean, you know. Meta. That's all you got to say. Meta. I mean, <laughs> most popular person in the world probably right now is Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and then. Attended and, Harvard Law. And then when I think of John F. Kennedy, mm -hmm. who went there. So those aren't presidents. Those become celebrity type folks. Whereas, you know, Howard, we, we got Thurgood Marshall. You know, they made the impact on the Supreme Court. Vernon Davis. Andrew Young. Douglas Wilder. Douglas Wilder, first African-American governor of Virginia. Both schools, that, that alumni list would be big. Oh, yeah. 
on third and four. Tolbert trying to run for it, and great tackle came up. His number 14 for Harvard, and that was Miguel Vega. Vega, who wasn't on our two deep, getting some burn. Before I get in trouble talking hard, yes, Marlon Wayans went to Howard. We, we were at Howard together, part of the Wayans family. He's <laughs> of, of white chicks fame. Yeah. He's a, he's a hard Howard guy. I feel like we could talk the rest of this ball game about. <laughs> may have to. The alumni. <laughs> if, if the Bison As give up plays like that, get stopped right now. On yeah. fourth down and turnover on downs. As that was Solomon Egby out of Loganville, Georgia. Coming up with the hole, the defense holding strong here in this second half for Harvard. They halted the Bison on their offensive drive. Score by quarter, if you're just tuning in, it was tied at 17 apiece at the half. And since then, 24 points have been run off by the Harvard Crimson. They're in control and have the ball with 428 remaining in the ball game. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green, back here with you in the Truth and Service Classic from Audi Field. Luke Imgi, the new quarterback, and some new faces we'll see in the backfield as well as Israel Benjamin, the running back. Well, Imgi, who took over as the late season starter when Charlie Dean went down. He was that hero against Yale last year, engineered that late touchdown drive. And of course, that is the big one in the Ivies for Harvard when they take on Yale at the end of the season. I'll talk to Coach and say, Coach, you ever wish you made it to the FCS playoffs or you could play in the playoffs? You know, he didn't sugarcoat. He said, absolutely. I've had some teams I thought could have won the whole thing. But he said, until that happens, you know, our Super Bowl is Harvard versus Yale with 50,000 people watching. So I'm sure when you go to Harvard, you go to win that game, to play in that game, that classic environment. That's second charge time out of the half. Time out on the field. We'll take a break as well. But coming up on the other side, Jay's HBCU Power Rankings when we return. Absolutely gorgeous. My goodness, that looks like a painting, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I just want to take a second and revel in that as we take a look at Jay's HBCU power rankings. Well, you see there, I don't think there'll be much shakeup. I mean, the big thing's going to be the anticipated matchup between North Carolina Central and South Carolina State next week. Prairie View A&M, hey, they're playing good ball there. Alcorn, big game tonight versus Southern University. Uh, whoever wins that game will being comfortably that number four spot. FAMU keeps on winning down there, starting to settle in. But the hottest team right now, North Carolina Central, looked very impressive. Quarterback Davius Richard. And Jackson State is the talk of HBCU football on and off the field. Uh, no doubt. They stay in the headlines. And Jay will be in Orangeburg, South Carolina, next weekend as North Carolina Central travels down to the reigning HBCU national champion, South Carolina State Bulldogs. Game of the week. I yes, mean, when is. the schedule came out, mm -hmm. when the predicted order finished, it was South Carolina State 1, North Carolina Central 2. Central had a problem with that. Head coach Trey Oliver, why are we seated number two? They're losing a lot. We still got our core back. We'll go prove it. <laughs> you get a chance to go prove it down in Orangeburg. Next Saturday. And held up short is Benjamin on fourth down. So a turnover on downs. And, and, and that's exactly what we got a chance to talk about at the half. But to remind our viewers, if you're just tuning in, North Carolina Central and South Carolina State, head-to-head uh, -head showdown between the preseason one and two. It's really a two-team race to some out of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. The Bulldogs have won the last two meetings. Florida a and hiring a new athletics director with Tiffany Dawn Sykes coming over from Dartmouth. And then 
All roads lead to Atlanta for the Cricket Celebration Bowl on December 17th. We'll be there. Yep. And pretty safe to say, uh, if, if I'm a fan of Jackson State football, I'm making a hotel reservation. Haven't clinched it yet, but I'm making a reservation. <laughs> and But they still have to win the SWAC. They got to make it out the, the SWAC championship game as well. We don't know, but give credit to Coach Prime and the job he's doing down there. Who's going to slow down Jackson State? Deshaun Scroggins, the new quarterback in, and Richie Ilaraza <laughs> collects it. So another uh, signal caller uh, in for the Bison. He comes in, completes his first pass. You know what they're saying now. <laughs> uh, we should play to the backup to the backup. <laughs> quarterback controversy, but good for him. Scroggins comes in and throws a ball down the seam. I told you, Richie Ilaraza is one of those guys, makes a tough catch, not afraid to go over the middle. 36-yard completion for the freshman. And then feeling the pressure, still staying on his feet. Avoiding the defenders and nearly completes the pass before it's batted away. Out of bounds, that brings up second down. Chris Mamundo was there. Ramundo. It just looked like no one was open. That one, but get a good look at Scroggins from Las Vegas. You know, think about this, Tiff. If we look at our rosters. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll see another game that will have more states represented. Yeah. In here. I mean, two private institutions located on the East Coast, but they recruit heavily from the West Coast down south. I mean, you can't say one team, one state is the base for either one of these schools as Scroggins goes down to the sack. That's Dominic Young Smith. Remember, Young Smith had that interception back in the first half. And now comes in to sack the quarterback at a timeout taken the final of the game for Howard. So this is, you have to know, tick, 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 get rid of it, but that poor pass protection as well by the offensive line. And this is what we were referencing earlier is Dominic Young-Smith who came up with the pick, and that was pivotal in the drive to help the Crimson punch it into the end zone to maintain the lead. Well, Harvard, we mentioned 2-0 on the Ivy along with Princeton and Yale. Remember, it was this is this is going to be an interesting year, I believe, in the Ivy because you know Coach Murphy feels like his group has got as good of a shot as anybody as they were picked first in the preseason. That pass complete to Antoine Murray. Preseason poll within the Ivy League. As we mentioned, tied for first. Harvard and Dartmouth both receiving first place votes. Remember, Princeton sharing the Ivy League title with the Big Green. So it'll be interesting to see how everything, you know, shakes out within the Ivy. How about, you know, the Yale Bulldogs winning three straight after their season opening loss to Holy Cross. And a lot of contact, and a flag comes out. How about this? Going back to a point earlier, I don't know if I've ever seen a depth chart where every player is from a different state United Pass States. Pass interference, defense. Number 23, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. You'll see the, the P.I. there didn't turn around, give him a chance to come back. But here go the states of the Harvard defense, starting defense. Ohio, New Hampshire, Michigan, Georgia, New Jersey, Idaho, Massachusetts, Alabama, Texas, Arkansas. Ah, they threw one in there. Michigan, too. Yeah, I could lie to you. I could have thrown in Pennsylvania and switched <laughs> it up. But, okay, they got two guys from Michigan. Uh, I don't think that's what people would expect to be there. But that shows you the global brand that is Harvard University. Founded in 1636. And, and, and then, to the majors. 
of the players on both of these teams. Second and goal for Howard, popped around, and Scroggins stays on his feet, and coming in and closing in to make the tackle is Kobe Joseph. What was your What was your major in college, Jay? Political science. Okay. Yours? Very well. Broadcast journalism. J School. You know, nearly intercepted in the end zone. I, and I think what what we kind of had some jaw-dropping moments in listening to the majors for some of these players. Well, government makes sense. Yeah. Applied math, economics, engineering, neurosciences. You know, and I asked Coach, you know, because I had to ask, ask a question. I asked every coach, give me a, a unique major. God's going to be a leader. And he was, and Coach Murphy said, no offense, but I got a bunch of nerds on my team. <laughs> and I love it because nerds are cool now. You know, the, the nerd thing is, is cool more than an athlete. Taking a look at the upcoming schedule for Howard, the Bison inter-conference play next weekend <laughs> for homecoming as they host Delaware yeah, State. Yeah. Tell you what, they better win homecoming. And, and not just because of, you know, I'm a Howard alum saying that we don't lose homecoming, but you can't, you know, with a five-game MEAC schedule, you can't fall behind. So they need to knock off Delaware State for homecoming regardless. Boost the morale. They need that. Because so quickly, if they lose that game, it goes downhill quickly. I've been on that campus for years. That's how they judge you. Like, you lose all hope if you don't win your homecoming. A lot of pressure. That may be the most pressure that Coach Scott has in his young coaching career at Howard. On fourth and goal, scrogging, scrambling, and into the end zone. So Scroggins helps Howard get their first points of the second half. And you see him, one thing I like about him, he doesn't look rattled. He settled down during this drive, changed directions, showed some athleticism, get up the middle and wearing number seven. That's a very of, special number uh, to you, Jay, your uh, former uh, number. Uh, I'm old school, but it reminds me of a more modern day right-handed version of Greg McGee. Okay. Howard's all-time leading total offense and total offense. Scroggins oh. waiting and very confidently throwing it in there for the two-point conversion to Antoine Murray. He plays 76 yards. Scroggins was able to punch it in from six yards out and then convert on the two-point yeah. play. Look at the patience. Knowing he's going to get hit and still delivers a two-point conversion for the strike. Interesting to see what this young man can do. We saw Greg McGee here earlier at the game as well. Good to see one of the Bison legends. Did you shout out Ted White? Ted's not playing today. <laughs> <laughs> First career yeah, we, touchdown pass. Well, two point conversion there, as we mentioned, for Scroggins. I was just checking. Well, Scroggins on that drive, though, was impressive. You, you, you might be seeing a quarterback competition brewing four of six, 61 yards in the closing minutes. Just happy for Scroggins. He get an opportunity to call your number. When you're the backup, all you can do is play your game. And I think with Scroggins coming in the game, that must have been something health-wise why we didn't see Quentin Williams in this football game. Bickerton going to attempt the onside kick and the sure hands and this one could be returned pushing defenders out of the way and that was Tyler Neville the tight end good hands <laughs> well the rule is you have to let the ball go at least 10 yards if you're trying to recover but if you're the receiving team watch him step up and get it on a hop and catch the Bison special teams. Sleep at the wheel. I'd be surprised if Coach Murphy didn't take a knee here. 
I mean, last time he had the ball, he ran the ball on fourth down. So, class act here by Harvard taking the knee. We've got the victory in hand. Number one formation for any head coach in the country. Victory formation. Victory formation. And what a game. Harvard came in and played here tonight. It was tied 17 all, but they came out like gangbusters in the second half. They took advantage of opportunities and a And in a good conversation there, you see between the two head coaches, Tim Murphy and Larry Scott, a lot of respect for one another as the clock hits triple zeros, 41-25, the final score. Yep. The Truth and Service Classic. You know, sometimes the game of football is more than about life than it is the game of football. And these two highly prestigious universities gave us a show and an enjoyable day here from Washington, D.C. For Jay Walker, I'm Tim DeGreen. So long from our nation's capital. We out.